Hey YouTube, we're tackling the transom this week and we're taking you along with us. We're going to show you how rotten this transom was and we're going to show you step by step how we restored it using a liquid transom. At the end of this video, we're going to tell you why we'll never do it again. Okay, all right. Water intrusion here. It's in here. Fix that. All these pieces are out. Some are a little more wet than others. This one's not bad. This one's a little damp. This one's pretty wet. No, not. That one's wet. Now let's take off the skin. I'm gonna do a three inch cut across, down, all across the bottom, all across this way. We're gonna cut this skin off. I've gone ahead and marked three inches, three inches all around and I'm gonna make my cut line right along that, that mark across here set my saw an inch and three quarters i don't want to go all the way through because i don't want to cut the inside skin let's get cutting This stuff is gross. It is completely rotted. Worse than I thought, which is good because it'll be easy to take out all the crap. So this is good. Good news so far. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's see what we got. Rot, rot, rot. This other piece of plywood down here is not as bad, but it's still, this is all bad. So that outer piece of plywood was completely rotted. It's disappeared. This middle piece is a little bit more intact, but we're gonna try now to scrape all this off. Look at this, nasty, nasty. Now I'm gonna grind that down to to the glass and I'm going to leave the skin and we're going to use the skin to put everything back. All right, we're going to ahead and grind it out the skin. I'm going to go ahead and put, um, I'm going to put a couple layers of matte and 1708 in some places. This is really weird happen at the factory but there's a lot of dry glass too so I'm gonna put a fresh layer of, uh, of glass over most of the stuff and repair this here there's a crack there a couple layers of 1708 there and it'll be done all right These little guys made a home All right, we're gonna come in and we have to get rid of all this, all this wood that's in here and we have to scrape it off. And the way to do that is you need a tool. You need a tool like this. This is a Milwaukee scraper tool, three inch scraper tool. And you put this on a reciprocating saw or a sawzall and it'll scrape all this stuff out. And then we could come in with the grinder and just grind everything down to the glass. And then we're gonna come in here on the sides 
we're gonna get an oscillating tool and get as much as we can out of there. So let's get to work. All right, so we've gone in, we grinded all the stuff out. The chainsaw worked pretty good. Make sure your chainsaw blades are sharp. Still gotta get some more stuff out, but I'm gonna start grinding out all the stuff and all these holes here. We're gonna put a brand new layer of fiberglass to cover up all the holes before we put everything back. The best way to get all this stuff out of the corners is with a chisel and a hammer if you can get in there. You can even slide it in there and just hit the hammer this way and it'll start getting all that crud out. Okay. That's the, I find that's the easiest way. Grinded everything out. Um, I got all that stuff out down there. There's some delamination here, so I'm gonna put another, put a mat and 1708 there. Uh, same thing with this, I'm gonna grind this out. I'll put another layer of mat and 1708. And then I'm gonna put a couple layers on over these holes. And that's it. So my buddy gave me a good idea to cover this part up. And we said to put some, I guess it's like a, you got aluminum tape that's for like ducting and stuff and you make a little wall and that way you could just laminate right over that and, uh, and it doesn't cave in so let's try it i'm gonna do a layer of trot strand and then some 17 away not too bad it caved in a little bit but we got got a nice barrier there with a couple layers of 1708 and chop strand mat same thing as over there i vacuumed out all the dirt in here now i'm gonna put the skin back on and then i'm gonna clean when i'm ready to pour i'm gonna get a stick with acetone and just wipe everything down from the inside or i might just clean it right now wipe everything down before i put the skin on just to get it ready all right we patched up the holes and uh i'm gonna go ahead now and um put the skin back on all right i pre-drilled my braces And now we're gonna put this back like a puzzle and we're gonna hold them in place with these drywall, drywall screws. There we go. I'm gonna fill all this gaps, all these gaps up with uh, putty, and um, I'm gonna hold and brace these corners up with some clamps before we pour anything. All right, braces are in. I put this guy across here. Well, for now, I'm gonna fill in these gaps with some putty, some silica, and some resin. Now, as far as how I'm gonna fill it, real simple. Instead of taking this whole cap off. I'm only going to take off about as wide of a tray, paint tray, because that's what I'm going to use to pour, pour the liquid in. I'm going to use a paint tray right in the center. The stuff is self-leveling and it gets rid of the gases alone. Once the, the liquid starts filling up to here, I'll put this little piece of cap back on with a piece of tape. And then up here, right above this cut, I'm going to cut off this piece so I can fill up the side with a funnel. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same right above this cut line, take off this chunk. So that way I don't have to fare this whole piece, it could just be this. And there we have it. A little messy, but I gotta come back and sand all this, so. Here the next day, the stuff is cured. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in about two inches off each side. I'm gonna grind that out and I'm gonna put some layers of uh, 1708 and chop strand mat just to kind of hold this all this together a little bit stronger than, than what this has now. So let's take these guys off and let's go ahead and do that.
We grinded everything out. I gotta go over with some acetone and wipe this down before we start laying glass. We did about an inch and a half, two inches to each side. And we could get a good bond around the line. And uh, I gotta fix this little area here because there was a hit here. So I'm gonna put some, lay some glass here. I'm gonna lay some glass up in here. And uh, that's basically it. So let's uh, start laying glass. All right, we're gonna start laying up glass. We're gonna start up at the top. I'm gonna wet this here. The fibers have something to stick to. I'm gonna start big to small. Well, the big part first there's different ways to do it but uh i want to do it this way realistically you might even want to try to do might want to try to lay these up and wet them out somewhere else and i think that's what i'm going to do to So I grinded everything out. Now I'm gonna go over with some fairing compound the first round and just fill everything up. And then we'll go back over with uh, uh, 120 or 80 grit just to uh, see where everything's leveled out. We're gonna do that back and forth, fairing, sanding, fairing, sanding until we get this thing nice and level and smooth. So you won't even tell that this has happened. You don't have much time working with this stuff. It's stuff. It's hard quick. It's been like two minutes. All right, I've done the first bit of fairing. Um, I sanded it down with 120. Now I'm gonna come in and fill all the low spots. Come back and sand again with 120. See if I have any other low spots, do it again. We'll see if I could do it in one more round. I doubt it, but we'll see. Right, we installed these guys. I didn't go with brass because I didn't want to buy the tool. And that's it. All right, I cut out the piece that I'm going to fill the transom with. Okay. Now what I've done is I've got it in these trays. These trays. So when we pour all the liquid, we can just pour it and it'll just pour right into the transom. It'll fit just like this. I gotta go adjust it a little more. I'm probably gonna make a little support on the bottom. To cover up the holes, we recommend using acetone to clean the surface first really good. And then we tried uh, black duct tape, but that didn't work too well, so that refrigerator, refrigerant, or AC duct tape, that stuff works good. Carbon core comes in a five gallon pail. Here we have four. And each pail comes with a bottle of its own MEK, which we'll be mixing in separately. It also comes with these instructions for adding the MEK, which you have to follow closely. We have your instructions. So it's really hot. It's about 90 something degrees. So we're going to be pouring 124 cc's, which this comes with 310 cc's total. So we're going to have to use a lot less. And you got to make sure you do it right because if not, it'll kick off too fast and it'll harden before you can pour it. Prior to closing this up, I wiped the, I grinded and I wiped the skin of uh, the inside here. Um, I grinded it down and I wiped it down with acetone, but I went in again just now with a stick and a rag and I wiped as much as I could all inside with acetone. And I let it dry so it's ready to go. We're ready to pour.
When adding the MEK, make sure you mix the pail for at least five minutes and make sure you have as many hands available uh, while you pour. In this case, I had my brother holding the pail and Ali was scooping the product out. This is the second pail and my, my dad is helping me here while Ali scoops everything out. The more hands, the better. I begin to clamp the transom down just to hold the shape as we continue to fill in the, the transom with the liquid. And now I'm going to put the cap back on and tape it down. To fill in the sides of the transom, we used a funnel. Um, we recommend making the opening as large as you can to make it easier. If you're doing the mixture correctly, you have about 15 minutes of work time with the product. So we did the same thing to the other side and filled both sides. Even after entering all our calculations into Carbon Core's website, we were short about five gallons for this project. We entered all the numbers correctly and it was still short. After the fact, we went on to CCAS website and their calculator was correct and called for the five extra gallons. We were missing about eight inches worth of product from the tow hooks and up. So I ended up mixing my own batch of resin, cabosil and chop strand mat and pouring it into the cavity within the 24 hour period that we poured the carbon core. At this point in time, we had just enough time to put a new trim on the transom and get a coat of primer before we sent the boat out to get the new motor put on. The motor is mounted here and the transom has been sanded down with 120 and here we are applying the Easy Prime primer to the transom. So we'll do the 3175 white Easy Poxy. And we're going to add uh, less than an ounce of the Easy Poxy uh, performance enhancer. And we're going to add just a little bit of thinner. We already prepped the transom. We sanded it with 320. We've wiped it down. And now we're ready to roll and tip. This is a heads up, I won't be using Carbon Core for any future projects. I had a little issue with them. Um, next time I do anything like this, it's going to be with uh, Ccast or some other, some other option. I got this boat ready about four weeks prior to mounting the Suzuki on the back. I got it ready. I was ready for pouring. I placed my order with Carbon Core and I didn't get any response for about a week. I called the company and they said, hey, we don't have any product. And I said, well, why do you have it online for sale as in stock? I said, oh, we'll get it out to you in a week. So a week passed and I got half of the product in. So I called them back. They said, we don't know what's going on. I called FedEx. FedEx said, hey, we screwed up. It's our fault. 
but since you're paying for the shipping, you can have Carbon Core call us, dispute the shipping charges, and you'll get back your money. I said, perfect. Called Carbon Core, no answer. Wrote them emails, no answer. Wrote them two emails, no answer. I still haven't heard anything back from Carbon Core. They're not gonna stand by their clients. I can't stand by them as a company. Good product, don't like the company. So next time I do anything, as far as transom related, which we will, we have projects coming up. We're not doing anything with Carbon Core anymore. We're gonna be using Ccast or any other of transom core. Now, why did we go with a poor transom versus Kusa board or versus wood? We didn't wanna go with wood because we didn't wanna have any rot to deal with in the future. We wanna keep this boat for a while and for the resale value as well. Wood is strong, it's great, it's cheap. Two pieces of plywood is 200 bucks plus materials. You could probably do this transom for about 500 bucks. We decided to go with something that's stronger. We're mounting a four stroke on it, it's heavy, so we needed something really strong and something a little bit lighter than wood to be able to hold this and balance out this boat. So that left us with Kusa board or with a poor transom. Here's a problem. Kusa board is fantastic. It's about 500 bucks per sheet. We need two of them. It's cheaper than the actual poor transom, but I am doing this by myself. And that means that I have to make sure that when I put in that piece of Kusa, into the skin of the boat it's going to get a good bond and it's 95 degrees out here in the summer stuff kicks off really fast i was not confident in having a good bond to that inside skin to be able to use that kusa board i just didn't feel comfortable I wanted to make sure that that bond was going to be good and it was going to be able to hold this thing because it's an expensive investment therefore i knew that if i prepped the inside of the of the transom perfect the inside skin all the outside part i knew that if i can do that right and i poured that transom in right that it was going to be a perfect solid bond and that's why we decided to go with a poor transom hey if you've done a project like this before we want to hear about it write it in the comments i respond to every single comment that's in our page and let's talk about it if you like this video please consider liking and subscribing it really helps the channel grow we'll catch you on the next one